Hi all, I have an absolutely amazing, instructive French Defence Masterclass game to show you here today. Leela playing against Stockfish, Season 14, End of Season Bonus Final. This is Round 68. Let's have a look. So, both engines choosing their own openings, and Stockfish does actually play, among other things, the French Defence, as well as Sicilian and other things. So, Leela does seem to be very very strong against the French defense let's see what happened in this game so knight c3 knight f6 and now bishop g5 is popular here but uh, this is the classical approach just grabbing that space advantage and you see that the bishop on c8 could be a problem piece sometimes it's referred to as bad in inverted commas uh, but in other respects, it adds solidity, solidity to Black's position. It's not necessarily bad in all cases. Sometimes it zigzags out in some variations of the French. And sometimes it suppresses f5 break because it's controlling uh, f5 indirectly and adding solidity to e6. So it's not all bad. It's a case of proving it's bad or not. We see f4, c5, knight f3, knight c6. There's this struggle over the d4 square here, bishop e3. Black takes on d4 now, knight takes bishop c5. So the knight protects that bishop here, so there's no surprise knight takes c6. There's nothing to worry about with knight takes c6. We see queen d2, black castles, and white castles queenside. Knight takes d4, uh, bishop takes d4. Now, in this position, a6 has been seen quite a bit as well. But usually here, after h4, knight takes d4 is played anyway, and so it can transpose. This kind of thing has been seen a lot, roughly equal prospects. So knight takes d4 immediately, bishop takes a6, so we're transposing anyway. Queen e3, so very interesting move, queen e3 here, putting pressure on that c5, now threatening bishop takes c5. Uh, this h in this position h4 has been seen before for example like this as we've uh, kind of seen uh with if if white can get the bishop onto b5 and uh or playing with the b5 and advance on the king side this is thought to be about equal this kind of stuff is very popular to do rather than queen e3 so it's a bit of a novelty move queen e3 uh we see queen c7 here, bishop takes d4, rook takes d4, and in this position, as an example, this is this is okay, it's about even. So queen c7, bishop d3, bishop takes, queen takes, and now b6. On queen c5, you might have thought that's uh, a point. White could play knight e2. That is a very nice blockading square, a knight on d4 in this position, uh, if the queen's if, if queen takes d4 happens white well, should be okay here uh, so we have b6 rook h1 queen c5 challenging the queen on d4 on bishop b7 here it seems f5 might be logical yeah because rook h1 strengthened e5 which supports f5 and if ever taking then d5 is weaker so for example e takes Bishop takes f5, but it leaves d5 weak here. So this position, in fact, e6 may be good. And uh, white's getting a big advantage here. Uh, look at that d5 weak. The bishop's kind of hemmed in. Nice blockading. Queen on d4 at the moment. Let's have a look at this again, this variation. Uh, if rook a, b8, f6, dreaded form pawn. Quite quick to get a form pawn in this line. And this could be quite devastating, for example, like this, with a devastating attack. Yeah, it's uh, big trouble here. If knight takes, it's just big trouble. Yeah, white's well, just crushing it, winning the queen there. So, um, yeah, so there seems to be an issue with allowing f5. So queen c5 with some urgency against that, it seems. Queen e3, and you might think this is really odd. This reverberation around the e3 square in this game and in fact isn't there a tactic available to black after queen takes rook takes you might have thought d4 here 
black actually before we get into queen takes e3 let's just have a look for a moment if the queen was left alone to flee to g3 this is dangerous for black after f5 again uh, this is uh, after bishop takes a knight e4 using the pin and also threatening knight f6 you can see this is horrible for black this kind of stuff very dangerous uh, so black took the queens off okay so this position black played knight c5 if d4 in fact white has rook h3 here looking at h7 so if takes then check check from the rook and hitting a8 so that's nice and in this position if um, h6 then bishop e4 anyway hitting the rook and just collecting the pawn on d4 with a big advantage so d4 is out of the question it seems knight c5 knight e2 heading for that blockade square and one question here uh, well there's a couple which some of us might have some insecurities uh, about this type of position how exactly do you play it do you leave, really leave the bishop to be swapped off or do you try and move it the bishop is actually useful on d3 for f5 sometimes uh, so just to try and um, reassure well me and other French defense players as white what's going on here uh, if if we try moving the bishop it seems as though white's not going to be playing for a big advantage for example this kind of position even if we get a knight on d4 it's going to be tricky to actually increase the advantage here and you'll notice that the f5 ideas have been extinguished there's there's not really too much potential for improving the position compared to what was played which is knight e2 and this offers the bishop uh, and you might think well and how would if the bishop was taken how do we actually take it or is, is it no big deal it turns out here if black does does take it it seems the three different end games are all favorable for white we don't need to be worried here if we get this scenario this is very very good news to have the blockading knight on d4 potentially against the bad bishop and I'll give you three different scenarios it actually really doesn't matter how it's taken if rook d takes we can use the c3 square swap off a pair of rooks this is just an example and if ever f takes don't even need to give an f fault black this is very good for a big advantage we can take with a pawn as well once we get this knight versus bishop it seems a lot of the uh, end games this is going to be wonderful for white look at that that knight on d4 compared to the bishop and we can even take uh with the other rook uh rook e takes it's just yeah there's infiltration possibilities and there's again this idea of playing for f5 with that beautiful knight on d4 so all all the end games seem to be absolutely wonderful here in case you did have some concern how to play this so the key thing is just let the bishop be taken that is one of black's remaining strongest pieces in the position this bishop is statistically like hemmed in by its own pawns so just bear that in mind so knight d4 we see b5 a3 rook fb8 and now b4 chasing the knight encouraging it to exchange on d3 black wants to keep it on the board knight a4 and we see the useful property of the bishop on d3 now with f5 and there's the immediate form pawn potential with f6 as well we see a5 if e takes then bishop takes look at d5 it's it's really quite vulnerable in this position uh, so bishop takes knight takes this position uh, is very nice indeed for white uh, let's have a look at this again uh, say instead of knight d6 rook takes this is also uh, an edge for white as well uh, so we see a5 uh, allowing potentially a dangerous form pawn and in fact we do have it form pawn ct springs store in the description uh, they're my biggest seller the form pawns iconic for me as as a sort of representation of in a way you know neural networks are trying to get easier to play positions and the form 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 pawn for me is a fantastic example for that it becomes much easier to play the position after this it restricts the king in the end games and the pawn is very dangerous in its own right so a lot easier to play the position well it can be a lot more relaxed once that form pawn 
is installed quite often. So hitting the rook, okay, there's a bit of activity for black. Uh, a pair of rooks get exchanged off. And this is all favoring white, this simplification. Rook e3, a beautiful rook left to probe black's kingside now. With that wonderful blockading knight on d4, this tickling of the pawns uh, is very dangerous for black. And that fawn pawn will remain unchallenged if the g-pawn moves. So it will be a, a real fawn in black's side, so to speak. So bishop e8 is played. If g takes, you might wonder, e takes, knight b6, check. We get rook g7 in, hitting f7. This is really good. We can take on b5 here. Big advantage for white. So uh, we see bishop e8, rook g3, hitting g7. That form pawn is well and truly installed now without a challenge. Uh, we see rook h3 probing black's pawns, h5. If king h7 instead, white just plays g4. And for example, knight b5, sorry, knight b6, g5. And you'll note the pinned pawn on g6, which means, yes, rook takes h5 check. So this is horrible for black, this kind of stuff. So we see h5. And now, curiously, you might think, g4, temporary pawn sack. Why? It's interesting. Uh, well, it does provide a target now on g6 sometimes for h4, h5 later. That's one perk of this approach you can see coordination on g6 so h4 h5 as an example if ever takes then e6 is weaker knight c4 knight f3 holding e5 that was the immediate threat there uh so rook a8 and now black is actually threatening a mate in one here funny enough leela manages to spot that yeah just put it on the ball for fun h4 rook a3 and for the puzzle book at the end <laughs> rook a3 is checkmate in h4 that would be a disaster so king c3 knight e3 rook h4 knight g2 rook h3 knight f4 rook g3 some dancing around rook a4 dancing on the chessboard rook g4 knight takes d3 finally that bishop is changed exchanged uh for the knight this really leaves that miserable bishop on e8 super instructive masterclass is well and truly in progress now and the rook holds b4, so the king is free to take here. Uh, so you might think, well, what about the pawn? It's interesting to consider uh, the different possibilities. But it seems king takes d3 has a lot going for it. Rook a1. Rook g1 to challenge uh, the rooks. We have check. This resulting endgame, as you might expect, is very low prospect for black. For example, uh, like this making sure king g5 is not happening and uh, basically uh, the king goes into the position here and wins f7 and that form pawn becomes a winning passed pawn basically it doesn't matter if black's bishop up it's a winning passed pawn as an example so yeah it's better to keep the rooks on and here we see a perk here of nice shielding with that c pawn rather than it being on the d file being here to shield the king uh, we see this desperate pawn sack d4 if rook a6 as an example uh, let's say knight g5 and you'll note that the form pawn and the knight control a lot of the escape squares of this imprisoned king here so this is real definition of easy to play this end game so for example rook a2 h4 and we can start blasting g6 here uh, or even the threat of g6 just to get black to be distracted to get a huge pin on e8 is absolutely decisive there's actually just the knight can now just walk like this to assist in exploiting the pin because the form pawn means black's not really running away that easily here so for example here uh, this black's too late to try and eliminate here on route, the knight stops rook f5, and it means here that black has desperate options like this, giving up the bishop. Because, say g5, knight takes, and it's too slow, knight e8, uh, knight, rook, the knight and rook converge on e8 too quickly for black to handle. So these end games are really, truly uh, miserable for black. Uh, and instead of g5 here let's try uh rook g5 instead again this knight walk 
uh, to d6 is going to be decisive. So basically, uh, desperate pawn sack time, d4. Uh, we have now king takes d4. Knight takes d4 is also simple and strong. Uh, for example, using the c-pawn even like this gets a very dangerous b-pawn here, which is very difficult for black to handle. The knight on d4 really uh, is very handy to stop uh, any blockade attempt, etc. So uh, king takes d4 is, is strong as well, though, as played. Rook a7, knight g5, check. And now white is improving the position, infiltrating on d6. And now shielded by that rook, the king can potentially walk in more easily. But look at this conversion on f7. Okay, now h4. Now we have a very painful, uh, lifeless position for black. So the mighty stockfish is just been completely positionally murdered. And the amusing thing is, Leela's just played like Magnus Carlsen in this endgame. Just look at all the pawns. They're on a colour different to the bishop. So the bishop's really not seeing any targets here. In fact, in this position, every single piece of white is on a dark square as if to mock the bishop on f1, truly mock mocking that bishop. Saying the bishop saying, Where are you guys? <laughs> They've turned the lights off. There's no there's no pieces to see here. Okay, so rook a seven, bishop c four. Uh, it doesn't really matter what black does. Bishop f1. We can actually just go for this b5 pawn rather simply. Uh, so bishop c4. It just gives itself up. But there's now two connected pass pawns potential. Uh, so here, uh, for example, this is a, a massive advantage. Uh, actually, I've overshot the game, to be honest. Uh, the game actually ended in this position, bishop c4, pardon me, on move 58. Bishop c4 was the game ending position. Uh, so I was just giving an example here. Knight going to e, e4 for d6 uh, is just, this is just a truly strong position for white without too much to fear at all from black. So that's the kind of positional game we really want for tactical opponents. But I think in over the board, I think most of our human tactical opponents will be sort of suiting their openings for their style. So, and that's something I discovered actually one season I was playing the French defence with disastrous results. And my friend Paul Georgiou said, why am I playing the French defence? It was the influence of my good friend Alex Efalontes. And for a while I thought I was getting some good games of the French. But the next season I switched to the Sicilian defence, uh, which suited my style better. And I suspect and I'm not sure why Stockfish team hasn't been advised on this, but when Stockfish is choosing its own uh, openings, or may maybe it's some configuration, it really should should play for the more tactical openings, in my view, rather than the French defence. As we see, the misery of the C8 bishop here in this game is something which um, is going to be difficult for, I, I in my opinion, uh, a classic alpha beta approach to really understand the the deeper implications of such a bad piece the longer term uh, downside here expressed by this game example okay if you enjoyed this game uh, video then please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member of chessworld.net play against other youtubers you can also test yourself on all the variations in this game uh, from the improved menu puzzle books option uh, which is has also a great link to the annotated game uh, and i'll put an addendum for one or two of those easy ones after this okay so um comments questions donations see the description like share subscribe with that notification bell it's truly appreciated thanks very much okay puzzle book addendum so if you go to chessmold.net my correspondence server for over 15 years now i really enjoy doing it improved puzzle books you'll see this it will get uh, the graphics soon when i upload the video and we do start puzzles and let's make it easy for myself. <laughs> one, one to ten. I think there were just one or two. There might have been just one or two, or just one. Okay, there was. Do you remember this one? Five seconds. Black to play, and checkmate. Okay, there wasn't a music moment where this is possible. Rook a three, checkmate. Actually, I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> okay, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks very much.